Hello Zero K fans and welcome to Nanolays at Dawn. I'm your host Shadowfury333 and yes I am still doing this. I realize I'm doing a Dark Souls Let's Play that is not going to stop regular Zero K cast. That's what I said before and I'm sticking to it. So yeah we're going to be doing a, an exhibition match between Dawn, well exhibition match stream tonight as always. Starting with the match between Svatabluk and Dawn on my favorite map of all maps except maybe Ravaged, Trojan Hills. So let's get right to it. So Don starting out with Cloakybot Factory over in what I consider the aggressive position in the map, the forward position, the one that allows you to very quickly get to your opponent, while Spotapluk also going for Cloakybot, but in the defensive position of the map, rather further back. So at this point, I'm guessing Spotapluk is going to be trying to fortify probably the eastern side. I was going to say the western side. They do have a Lotus coming up in the middle but their factor is right next to the western side of their opening, so probably going to fortify up here and maybe go over here. Probably more likely, given the factory position, are going to go stay back, not really worry about the forward section of metal extractors just yet. While Don, on the other hand, is probably going to be shifting over here to expand over to the back, because that's usually how players go. But for now, focused on setting up right where they started. Don with the first little bit of aggression, a couple of glaives going out, one to the third location, which is... Rarely used, but good to check anyway. And another one to the aggressive spot. Don sees that Spotabluk not going for the aggressive, and Spotabluk definitely not. Already a Lotus and a defender in the main base, so they're definitely just wanting to play keep away right now. So Don right now is probably going to be seeing them expand a fair amount, given that they realize Spotabluk is not going to be attacking most likely. I mean, it's hard to say Lotus and defender is not a huge amount of defenses, but it is still more than normal. Normally it would be one or the other, but it looks like no, Don's responding in kind, so both players are going to be playing a bit more defensively in the opening. Though, like I said, Don does have the forward position. They do have a couple glaives further up for scouting. Don will know if Spotapluk does go up to the forward position themselves, so at least that's information that Don will really like to have. But on the other hand, Spotapluk is, as I predicted, going over to the northwest, which is where Don's glaive was killed. That was the glaive that attacked the main base. Did not stay there, although another one is going down for scouting purposes. Nicely done, Don. One thing I noticed in the 2v2 tournament, because Don was actually part of the winning team, the XCOM team, the Sprang and Don, they did pretty well. I mean, they won first place. There's not much better you can do than that in a tournament. But one thing I noticed about Don is that Don was constantly scouting, sending out darts or other scouting, and it's just making sure they knew what was going on with their opponent, which is a very important thing to do, and something I feel does not get done enough. I know I myself don't do it as much as really it should be done, and a lot of people, it seems like it's not a super popular thing to do. It seems like the common play way to play is to simply go off intuition and game sense. Just assume what your opponent's going to do, assume that they're going to do a certain build, a certain expansion order all that stuff and make sure you know when it's coming whereas Don scouts and I really respect that because I say all the time people need to scout more often and now we have Don here scouting fairly often actually just blocked off an expansion that's a huge deal right now spotted Pluck would have an extra six metal per second had Don's glaive not gone down there to kill that conjurer like spotted Pluck would have 20 metal per second right now though Don really does need to hurry up their expansion apparently they're having some issues with priority yeah, they're commander and high priority. Although it is building economy, but still pushing defenses a lot. While on the other hand, Svatopluk, they are definitely playing more in the back. Kind of what I expected. They are not pushing too hard, not expanding too much. Don definitely taking advantage of that position. They know that Svatopluk is staying back. They know Svatopluk is trying to build up. So Don is expanding around, just taking more of the map. At this point, I think Don can hold it, too, just given the amount of defenders being built up. Don's not expanding naked. They're just expanding really fast. And having stopped Spotted from expanding earlier, that bought them a lot of time. Easily a minute. I mean, at that, that point, Spotted would have been ahead by about 8 metal per second. Now they're slightly behind. So very well done there, Don. And Don, as you can see, they're taking over the map. They got the south side of the map pretty much taken over. Center of the map is being taken. Eastern Hill and Western, both hills, the Western Hill actually being fortified quite a lot before being taken properly. And the Eastern Hill, not quite, no, there is still fortification priority. So yeah, there's a lot of fortification going on here. Don is making sure they are not expanding naked. They want to know Spotted Pluck cannot just take away their hard-earned gains. And I don't think Spotted Pluck's even going to try at this point. I think Spotted Pluck is going to be going in for something a bit more, okay, they're going for sides, which 
Makes sense. It's going to say something either heavy or stealthy, and they went for Cloakie Butt Factory, so stealthy is really the option, and sides are the way it's going to go. So, given that, done. What do they have to deal with that? I mean, they have defenders all around the place. I don't really see that being a problem. I really don't see the sides getting in too far, honestly, because they'll hit something. They might be able to damage a metal extractor, maybe even kill the defender, but the defense ranges overlap. So, for a scythe to be able to get in and deal a lot of damage, that is not going to happen to most areas. There are a couple areas, like right here, this Lotus could be gotten rid of, or if they went further back, got rid of this defender. That could be done. Or right in the back. If they went straight to the back of the base, done would be defenseless. So sides are not a bad option, but they're kind of... They're going to be tricky. It's going to be a real test of execution, real test of scouting, real test of basically Spot Up Look's own intuitions. Because Spot Up Look has no idea where Don has expanded right now. They haven't scouted this out. They've basically sent one glaive, and that was about it. Don, on the other hand, they're, they've got size of their own. They've been consistently sending glaives around the map. They know exactly what's going on. So there's no reason why Don would be... I mean, they might be surprised by the sides a little bit, but they have defenses set up, and they don't have defenses set up back here. That's the only place they don't have defenses, back here. Everywhere up front, they have defenses. There are some vulnerable points, though. If Spotted Plick does find them without decloaking the sides, that will be perfect. Otherwise, Don pretty much has this, or at least has the resources to have this. Their energy has been a bit of a problem, though. They've been accessing metal. They are building a bunch of wind. They are getting as much energy as they can. However, there are sides, and the thing is, those wind generators are great targets for sides, and oh man, oh no, Spotted Plick just gave away the best target. They were about to move their sides in the best direction. Although there are still, no, there's construction over to the, the northwest. But those sides still going to the best direction. However, Don has been alerted to their presence. And sides from Don, not able to do too much. Spotted Plug's commander been scouted out, but not really heavily damaged. And Spotted Plug, with these sides, like, this is a perfect area to attack. I mean, it's a little bit suicidal, but given that Don has needed a lot of energy and there have been a lot of energy shortages for them. This is 30 energy right here. Not quite enough to get them back to excess territory, but still, that's that's a vulnerable spot. Doesn't look like Spider Book's going towards it. I'll have to keep an eye on that. At the same time, Don just doing a frontal assault with Rocco's. Given that Spider Book was going primarily for Warriors and Sides, I mean, the Sides are a bit of a problem, but the Warriors? Rocco's take care of that, and Don already saw that Warrior earlier killed off the Glaive that was over in the Northwest. And otherwise... Spotted Book, okay, Spotted Book's building, building an army of Glaives. That's a really good counter option for the Rockos, as always, but at this point, I feel like Don is just going to be exploding with something. I almost feel like Don is sending out sides to try to figure out what Spotted Book is up to, and then just power out the counter. I mean, as soon as, okay, here we go, now we're seeing, now we're seeing the sides come in and deal some damage, and Don's commander, however, fully upgraded with EMP on top of the, all the defenses around here. These sides did manage to do a number on the energy infrastructure, but like I said, that didn't get it down to excess point. And at the same time, the main base has gotten more and more built up. So I, like I said, I think at this point, Don is going to be trying to set up a bunch of sides to scout out. And then from there... Although, they do have the gunships out. But from there, I think they're going to be sending out whatever counter they need. Like, just... Although, it might not power it out right now. I mean, they are powering out a bunch of bunch of caretakers so yeah this really does tell me they're trying to power out build power so that they can just adapt however they need to because now they see oh hey there's a bunch of sides rapiers are going to be useful against that but really warriors are going to be necessary though at the same time there is a sky dust so these glaives won't be able to go too far before being torn to shreds and instead going south that is the better option although even then going south if they go south that's going to get them closer to sides from the looks of that is the option oh no we are seeing warriors that's what I figured. The Warriors are the option, and just powering out those Warriors. Now, are there going to be Rockos as a response to that? No! Rapiers instead! We see that Spotted going for the Rapiers. Spotted Book's commander themselves, though, just getting hit hard. Not that... Okay, not an economy loss, but if Spotted Book loses their commander, that is a fair amount of metal they would... Well, yeah, they've spent about 1,000 metal on this commander so far. And also... If they lose that commander, they lose a lot of frontal position. They don't have a lot of supported workers up in the front. Up in the front lines. And the Glaive's doing a number here. This is the one thing. Don did not have a lot of defenses set up over to the south and over to the east. 
Spotted Book able to take that out, but at this point, that just gets them to parity. That does not get them winning. At the same time, Don has been powering out Warriors. They can assault with these, and I don't see Spotted Book with a bunch of Rockos. I see them with Rapiers, which are not bad against Warriors. But I don't know if they're going to be effective enough in terms of speed. I don't think they're going to be fast enough. How many Rapiers does Don have, though? It looks like... It looks like all the Rapiers belong to Spotted Book. About one belongs to Don. Yeah, that's about it. Not really even being focused on. That Gunship plant's basically getting no money whatsoever. Which is fine. It looks like Spotted Book's really investing in anti-air. They have a couple Tridents so far. The Rapiers are more of a generalist focus. But the Razor as well. I mean, at this point, Don basically does not need to focus on air that much. Because Spotted Book's really committed to anti-air. Although, unfortunately, Don... Okay, Don does have some warriors in the main base, because this is starting to get disruptive, actually. Spotted Book's actually getting an economic advantage thanks to all of these glaives going around the back. That is not working out the way it was intended. I, I'm sure that Don did not like this, but at the same time, there's warriors right here. Stardust actually able to do enough. You know, the warriors aren't even really needed. The defenses, the defense line held. A bunch of mexes were lost, though, so those do need to be replaced. But at the same time, a frontal assault coming in, and this is when the rapiers are going to come out. 18 rapiers, those warriors are going to have a hard time. I don't see those warriors getting too far with those rapiers in tow, but then again, the rapiers are pretty near, are pretty close to each other, pretty clumped up, and actually, they're... No, no, this is what I expected. The warriors are not able to do a huge amount of damage. But still, not a bad assault, but not a great assault. The amount of rapiers that there is just way too overwhelming. And these warriors are not going to have much of a chance. That being said, though, Don still has a very strong economy, if not for if nothing else, reclaim. But yeah, the reclaim is not going to last too long. What, however, the thing is, if they change their setup, I mean, they are getting gremlins. Good choice. Get rid of the rapiers. They'll need to regroup, though. They are going to want to regroup. Although they are, are they going for a warrior drop? They're going for a warrior drop. Not sure where, but I mean, the rapiers aren't going to be that out of position. There's not really an out of position for air units. The best thing they could possibly do, I suppose, would be to hit... Okay. Best thing I could see them doing with these warrior drops is going around here, hitting the gunship plant directly. Just avoiding the rapiers outright, but then the rapiers need to be out of position when that happens, and they're not. They're being heavily defensive. There's really no other good option for a warrior drop. Any other option for economic disruption is really not that powerful. The only other option would be... No, there's no other option. That's it. The only other option, I suppose, would be the geothermal generator, but that's not going to last too long. And these warriors basically throwing their lives away for nothing. Not able to deal any damage. Not able to even regroup when they landed. The gremlins are out, but that loss of warriors is not fun. It's not what they would have liked. Although, it's not a bad bait here. That's not a bad bait at all, because the razor, I mean, that's been opened up. So it can be destroyed pretty easily. The tridents are there in case the rapiers want to come in, and the warriors can get rid of everything else. And of course, the gremlins are there just in case. So Don still has a pretty good army set. They are rebuilding their metal extractors. They are rebuilding their economy. And Spotted Book's economy taking another barrage of hits. More warriors coming in. That is not... That's still not good. Don's still managing to maintain their position that they gained at the start of the game. I mean, a bit of rebuild, but still, it's good. Don still has a fairly strong economy. Down by 10, though. Not what they like, but at the same time, Spotted Plick is so air-invested, Don has the counter for that. Like, Don has loads of anti-air. Not sure about the Glaives, though. The Glaives were really not the best idea. Rapiers do deal with Glaives very efficiently. However, it doesn't matter. They have to respect the Tridents. They have to respect the Gremlins. That, that still works. There you go, Don. I think Don has this game. I mean, good advantage at the start. Good way of taking advantage of Spotted more passive play, and as a result, this area is pretty much undefended. I mean, the Lotus is going to go down soon enough. Both Lotuses, really. There's too many Glaives to deal with this. I mean, the thing is, when Spotted did this to Don, Don's economy was so far ahead that even losing the entire southeast side didn't destroy them. They just hit the parity mark, roughly. A little bit behind Spotted But now, Don doing the same thing to Spotted is going to break Spotted back. The Frontal Assault also helps, but yeah, just all that together is enough that'll probably just crush Spotted Book. They have the Reclaim for now. So we'll see if they can push something with that. More Glaives coming out. And there are no Warriors. No Warriors in tow. Don does not have any Warriors in play. Really? Looks like they're all dead. 
So that does mean the Glaives for Spotted Flick have free reign. Though Don still does have a much stronger economy. Might be a problem. Spotted Flick's commander very much threatened. It looks like it's going to go down in about two seconds. Yeah, that's that's it. That's dead. Spotted Flick's commander down. And that was, like I said before... That was, as I mentioned before, basically the thing that was keeping Spotted Flick up front lines. They didn't have any other constructors at the front lines. However, now that they have their army going out, this is a big counterattack. Don is going to be able to adapt to this, though. Are they going to? They have enough glaze, but they don't have any warriors. They don't really have a lot of Stardusts. They have some gremlins, but really their defenses aren't great, and Spotted Flick could reclaim a lot of this. The only thing that Spotted Flick is missing right now for reclaim is the workers to do it, and even then, there is some. So there's a lot of reclaim. Spotted Flick is not out of this by any means. I still think Don has a better position to adapt to, but still, this is... There is one last chance. There's one last hope for Spotted Flick if they do reclaim well enough. Do reclaim and rebuild. Don's economy is pretty powerful, but it's not necessarily crushing yet. We don't see a lot coming in from military units, though. That's the one thing. If Don can get rid of these rapiers, if the rapiers go away, that's the one thing. But if they can get rid of the rapiers, that leaves Spotted Flick basically open. Because there isn't much military expenditure at the moment. There's some defenses, but not much military, and that is a huge deal. Actually, this glaive gets the right position. Oh no, it doesn't even need the glaive. Wow. Well placed chainsaw getting rid of the cranes, really knocking out that exp well, knocking out that reclaim. Dropping Spadaplex's economy down by 10 metal per second as a result. That's I mean, already Spadaplex is so behind. In that one glaive attack, like I said, that kind of broke Spadaplex's back. And now light defenses are all that remain. Although a Dante on top. I did not see that Dante. Where's the Strider Hub? Oh, it was, it was parked right in the middle of all the rest of the economy there. That's why I didn't see that Dante being built up. Still, that's like... Still kind of a last stand, but it could work. Spiderbug does have the reclaim to get back to economic parity, so Don still has to worry about some things. Having Athena coming up as well as some tridents. Getting rid of the, getting rid of the rapiers is kind of their top priority. There's still a pretty strong number of them. There's still about 11 of them left. A few glaives around the map. I mean, Spiderbug is not down. The Dante up, about to get rid of these warriors. If those warriors are not careful, the warriors need to get out of the way. And they do get hit pretty hard, actually. I was about to say, they do avoid that, but no, they do not. They actually get hit. And the rapier's still forced to push back, but there isn't much that Don has to get rid of a, get rid of that Dante right out. No Zeus. Really, it would be the thing to do. Zeus or Rocco. Rocco should be an even better option. But none of that is in play for Don, for Don right now. But Spotted Look, they've kind of run out of the reclaim. It looks like a lot of the reclaim actually did go into that Dante. They still have some left, but it's getting closer and closer to No Man's Land. And given the Dante's... Dante and the Rapier is kind of their only options. And the Rapier itself is... The Rapier Ball is just about gone. And can't easily attack. The Dante's really the only thing left. Along with a handful of Glaives, which surprisingly are doing a lot more damage than they should. And finally, the Lotus being done, but that's... Is that going to be enough? Yeah, it'll be enough to stop them. I'll stop the Glazer. They dealt enough damage to at least be something, but not enough to be a huge problem. And there's the Athena's purpose. Get Infiltrators to stun out the Dante. Now, where's the follow-up force? How long is the Dante stunned for? 25 seconds of stun. That's more than enough for... Well, maybe not one Glaze, but yeah. And another just in case. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a Glaze finishing this off. No, not quite. Not quite. That's why support forces are important here, and this is entire, the entirety of Spot of Look's setup right now is Striders. I'm not sure if Don realizes this. They might now. They might now that they see the Scorpion coming up. Another Scorpion behind it. I mean, Don already did start getting a bunch of Infiltrators, which is the right call. Like, getting the Athena, not a bad idea. Getting the Infiltrators was a great idea. Because at this point, they're going to be more and more necessary the more Striders come in. But yeah, it's like, that's the thing, is that is the entirety of Spotted Flick's military. That is it. These Striders are it. If they go down, there's nothing left. 
I'm not sure if they're gonna. There we go. Oh, not quite. You need two. You need two infiltrators to get through that. That is not enough. But still, that's that's something. Do you see hammers? We don't see any Rockos. We still don't see Rockos. I'm very surprised by that. Now, Spider Pokemon actually be able to turn this around. Three Striders is a big problem, especially when the other player has not really got a lot of anti-heavy or heavy themselves. And artillery is okay, but it's not great. And with all the workers helping out, not much coming out of the sky except Tridents. Inferno's coming in to try to help. That'll, all that'll do is soften it up. That will reveal the Scorpions. But right now, the Scorpions aren't hiding too much. This is kind of the thing about Reclaim. Also, worth pointing out, Don did lose a lot of their economy. And Spotbook and chat making a very good point about how Spot Don was suiciding a lot of units. That warrior drop in particular was not the best place to put it. But yeah, at this point, Don does have the military advantage. It's just that... Sorry, mil economic advantage. But Spotup look is making that count a lot longer. Nicely done, though. I mean, good Inferno. I mean, the thing is, Don has the economic advantage. Cannot forget that. So Spot of Look may have a military advantage, and it's a Bantha coming in, because why not? Thing is, there's still the nukes. There's st well, the nukes. There's still the silo. There's still the economic advantage aligned for construction of units. The only thing Don doesn't really have is that concentration of power. Spot of Look has that concentration of power. Don does not. And that's causing a problem. The main problem being that there's no easy way for Don to get rid of Spadablik's units. There's a lot of hard, tricky ways to do so. Infiltrators, snipers, or a load of Rockos, but no easy, straightforward ways. And Don lost a lot of units to work. That's the thing. And Spadablik ended up winning. Don throwing in the towel. Despite an early economic lead, Don lost because of three Striders. And that's where Reclaim's kind of important, and also that's where it's kind of important to not lose units. That was really kind of what it came down to. I mean, these Rapiers, yeah, a lot of them died, but they were still very useful, and still did stop Don from going around too much. Especially that one drop. I'm not sure what... I think Don expected the Rapiers were out of position, and Spotted was not retreating them. But yeah, I feel like Don had the right idea early on of expanding out, making sure they had all the map, but the problem is they kept losing parts of the map. They... They had the center really well protected. They had the western and eastern hills protected, but the southeast was not well protected. That kept being the vector along which Spadapluk was able to destroy Don's economy or heavily damage it several times. And so even though Spadapluk lost his economy, which was a big blow, it wasn't enough. It was good, but it wasn't good enough. It was like if there was a follow up on top of that, and if like if there was a bunch of warriors on top of that, for instance, to stop the follow up counterattack glaives, that would have probably sealed it, because then they would have, been, would have been able to push in with those warriors and tear everything else apart. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Spotted was able to hold on to just enough to be able to get a large enough army. Bit of a Pyrrhic victory, but it worked out. Not really that Pyrrhic, though. Definitely a good comeback. So yeah, that was that. And I gotta say, I mean, to point out, that was actually about a 400 LO difference. And, yeah, a little, actually 500 LO difference. And Don put up a really good fight. I honestly thought Don was going to win. That was really well done. That was really, it seemed to be coming down to the fact that they weren't as efficient with their units, despite the economic advantage. But the economic advantage early on was well thought out. It was clearly good thinking on Don's part. It's just they seemed to lose focus as the game dragged on. Which is a common thing to happen. This game, like, RTS games, that's a... That's one of the hardest things to get used to with an RTS game is how do you keep your focus in the long haul? Like, as the game progresses, maintaining focus is the biggest challenge, or one of the biggest challenges. So anyway, going to be moving on. The next game is going to be Orphilius and Andrew Y2K on Red Comet. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.